Hi, my name is David Duffy, and I'm delighted to be a guest here at the R25 Extra Surgeons for the Arts post COVID 19. A little bit about myself. Obviously, first of all, thanks to Fergal and Waterford Chamber for having me. It's a distinct pleasure and a real honour. Thank you very much. Now, a little bit about myself. I'm a musician from Glasgow. I have obviously been badly affected by the pandemic and was forced to kind of think outside the box as to how we could keep going as an artist. So I started to play online on Saturdays and that kind of kept me going. Then I was asked if I'd like to do a, a local radio DJ show and I thought, you know, I'm going to say yes. So I did. I then decided to go to college to sound, uh, study sound production and I've also been asked to help develop a musical experience for a charity called I Was Goni. Now, these are all absolutely amazing things and they have happened as a result of being put into a position of what do I do? What do I do for my art? What do I do for myself as an artist? And also as well, being asked to speak at such a fine event as well by Mr. Fergal O'Neill. And again, thank you for that. But without much further ado, I will get on and I will tell you about my five ideas. The first idea I had was about maintaining an online presence and about taking your product further afield. There's a lot of people have conveyed to me that they wouldn't normally go to gigs. And having watched me online, they've really enjoyed the musical experience and they'd like to keep doing that. My idea was to set up a system where we could have a remote recording access of a, 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 either a large studio or a large room and we would then broadcast or record and have listening parties all around the world under the banner of a group or a name or a company. And then obviously we license out the product to the people in the various locations around the world. Bit of money, bit of revenue can turn over. They can make a bit of dollar. Our artists can make a little bit of money. And also as well, because they're performing live, they'll get royalties for that performance from the PRS who we will discuss later, but these things would be a, it would be great for us to blend uh, the online experience and also with post-COVID, we're going to go back to live. It's definitely going to happen. But as I say, there is a market there for people who don't want to do that and who would love to still have that musical experience. And I think that would be a great thing moving forward. And also, being from the UK and with Brexit and the complications that that's going to throw up with touring mainland Europe, this is another way in which the artists can still engage acts and the their fans in mainland Europe and to develop that and to also make a little bit of money as well and everybody can have that experience. And obviously within that, the technology will get better, the access to that kind of equipment, and it's already very, very good and accessible. So, as I say, post-COVID and moving forward, that would definitely be, I think, my idea for number one for us moving forward. Now, number two, my second idea. I've been asked many times if I was available to teach children, all the way up to adults as well, but uh, as a result, I thought of taking small groups of students and giving them an education, in not only how to perform, but the management and sound engineering aspect of the industry also. I'd looked at developing a syllabus that would give the student a rounded education that would allow them to be self-contained within the music industry. By that, I mean that they would learn how to play music, they'd learn how to record it, edit and master it, and then they would gain an understanding of how to promote themselves online and to create their own musical identity. We would also look at the aspects of the industry like collection agencies, how to register and all the other administrative duties they would need to conduct, setting up their own record labels and being in publishing companies, etc., so that they could make sure that the revenue is generating and it's a viable, viable job for them. That's a lot of people's problem is the fact of the viability of how to maintain as an artist and make money. Obviously, when you sign record deals, etc., especially with larger companies, they take a lion's share of your money. So, as I say, the education, not just performance-based, looking at the industry and starting, as I say, from a rudimentary level all the way up and having it as a supplement to what they're learning at school, you know, so they can have that backup knowledge. I hate to say it, but I kind of rock school kind of idea, but obviously a bit more encompassing of a larger 
part of the industry and, as I say, gearing it towards how they can move forward. Now, for my third idea, I've been involved with a charity called I Was Goni. And what we're doing is we're working with people with uh, severe disabilities, mental health issues, learning disabilities. And the creator of the charity, his son is autistic. And uh, he had noticed that when they go to any of these kind of experiences, whether it's music or anything, there's a real sense of euphoria that carries on for a very long time after the performance itself. So what we wanted to do was to cater an experience directly to and take catered for specific groups, whether it's people with severe disabilities or just learning disabilities or long-term unemployed mental health issues, or even people in groups with mixtures of all those and catering it bespokely to their needs. Because obviously my own son is autistic and he doesn't like loud noises and he's very kind of sensory sensitive, you know? So we were still developing those and obviously tailoring it to the varying uh, groups that we're going to do. But I do believe that that is a future for musical experience because obviously when we go to gigs, we all know that we get a euphoric response from the songs that we love, sung by the artists we love. So that is where we've been looking at directing that, as I say, I was going to charity. And it's say uh, how Mr. Fergal O'Neill had actually got in contact with me because he'd uh, seen the work we'd been doing and realised that it has got some uh, real legs. And uh, yes, looking forward to developing that further. And that's been my third idea. Now, we all know that in the modern world that musical artists aren't getting their fair share of streaming be it Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, any of these stream sites, anything that's happening, there's very little money going to the artists. I'd like to see an online streaming service that's owned by the artists, all equally. What they put in, they will get a reasonable recompense for the amount of plays that their bands actually get. And also as well, if you tie it into these people being shown how, or sorry, these people, these artists being shown how to develop themselves and how to have their own record label and publishing, then they would retain the rights and the ownership. So when putting their music onto these sites, they know that no matter where it's played, how it's streamed, that they will get a reasonable cut and also a cut that means that they can actually have, as I say, a viable shot at making a living within the music industry. And it, it can only benefit a music lovers as well because if musicians have that extra money coming in then they have extra money to develop their own art the way they want without scrutiny from a third party that wants you to write the next Ed Sheeran song or the next Rihanna or Beyonce or whatever song and any arts and hey, I'm probably from Israel Imagine Dragons who's new who knows but that that's what we're we'll looking for as I say as a collective society that owns the music owns the site and we benefit from that financially. Now, for my fifth idea, with everything that we've discussed thus far, from the lessons all the way through for the charity, I would love to see it culminate in a community event, a local festival, you know, displaying all the arts, you know, dancers, actors, artists, musicians, and all the varying aspects, including the logistics of how to put on an event, the management of an event, tie it in with the children's classes, a kind of like an end of year project that we're looking at. So they would be learning about the recordings, learning how to produce that, and how to, as I say, promote online. And these events could be tied in so that they're promoting that as well as learning, as I say, how to function in the music industry it's also going to be really, really important for community spirit, I feel. To have that, as I say, collective effort, people it would bring us back together, people seeing their children dancing, having fun, being educated, but also under supervision of people who are the professionals in the industry so that they're getting a valid education and something that could be extraordinarily tangible for them. My son wants to be a songwriter, and it's I, I, I had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> I let him came to that uh, come to that conclusion on his own, and he is loving it. So I've been inspired by that 
And that's what I would like to do is harness that energy. And obviously with other people's like the young to old, I, I feel that there's a lot of people when they get to a certain age, they count themselves out of the musical uh, experience completely. Like, oh, I'm too old or this, that, and the next thing. No, not too old. As I say though, fifth idea, big community festival, drawn on all the experiences, linked in with everything else I've been talking about, especially the educational part of it, and especially with the younger ones so that they can be involved and be totally emboldened by it. I was never given an opportunity to do anything like that within the industry when I was that age, and I would have jumped at it. And as I say, I think that that's uh, moving forward to develop them from a young age and then taking into the industry as it comes back, very, very viable. So those are my five ideas for the Surgeons 25X. Once again, thanks to Fergal O'Neill and the Waterford Chambers for having me along. It's been an absolute blast. I um, so I think I need to lie down after that. It's, it's quite an experience talking to you all. I look forward to uh, hearing all the other ideas from all the other uh, uh, sorry, the commentators and everybody that's uh, giving up all their time to do this. And once again, thank you to Fergal, Waterford Chambers, and uh, I'm David Duffy, and I'll be signing out. Thank you very much for listening. How was that? Good. Time. 12 minutes are under.